Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to look into how to setting up the fire rate of the actual weapon and if we have the time for it we'll look into animating the weapon as well. So let's just get right into it. As we can see we have this fire command that's being called directly from the player weapon. So it takes the current weapon and calls fire on it. Now this fire command should keep track of whether we can actually shoot or not. So let's set that up, up now as well. So we're going to make a public float that's going to be let's say the fire rate. This should be how many times a second that we can fire. So let's just set it that to a default of 0 0.5 and now I also typically like working with time, so I'll make a private float and call it the last fire time. And so every time that we fire, we'll call the last fire time equals to time that time. This means that the player will locally figure out when they can shoot or not. As I mentioned in the previous video, everything will be client-sided in the setup, which means it won't technically be very cheat-proof or anything like that. But it should still make for a fun multiplayer experience, especially if you want to play against friends or likewise. So what we need to check now is whether the time that time or the current time is less than the last fire time plus the fire rate. If it is not, we shouldn't be able to fire. And if it is, we will be able to fire. So this should technically make for, well, pretty much all of it. So let's go and go to the, the player weapon here where we have the update method where we currently have get key down. Let's just say get key. This way we can hold it down. And now if we go and test this, we should hopefully be able to see that they will be damaged with half a second in between when we just hold the mouse button. Let's try and do this and I'm gonna hold the mouse button and you should see in the console, it should take about half a second for each log to come out. And as you can see, that works just fine. And now we can set a different fire rate for each weapon. So for example, the rifle could have a fire rate of 0 0.2, the pistol could keep the 0 0.5, and the shotgun could have a fire rate of 1. And now if we just go test this, you'll be able to see now it'll still be the 0 0.5 here. The rifle will be quite a lot faster and the shotgun will be quite a lot slower. So as you can see, that works perfectly and that was very easy to implement. I just simply forgot last video. Now let's look into how we want to animate the weapon. Now the thing is for most weapons, we'll want some kind of muscle flash and we'll want probably some kind of recoil animation or to push the actual aim of the player up or something like that. And a good way of doing that is instead of abstracting this void, what we can do is we can make it virtual. This means that we're somewhere in between the abstracting and actually making the method so what this means is we can write code in here and have code run and let's say i just debug.log and i throw in test and we go to the pistol now you can see this overrides the animate weapon this now means that nothing will debug out but if we choose to run the base.animate weapon this now means that it'll run the code that we wrote in here i hope that makes sense for you so if we didn't have this base it wouldn't run the code and it would just completely override it whereas having this base means we'll actually keep some of the code here this means that we can do something generic like the muscle flash which all weapons will have but yet we can also have the freedom to actually do something unique in here if we want to and it also means that we don't actually need to have the method if we don't want to so for now for example we could just remove them from everyone like so and that way the code in here will always be the one running and as you can see right now it's saying virtual doesn't matter because nothing's actually overriding it so virtual is doing technically nothing at this point but hopefully it will in the future we'll see if it makes sense but i like keeping my my options open now what we'll need is we'll need some kind of some kind of particle effect let's do it as a particle effect so let's do serialized field private particle system and this will be muscle flash and so every time that we shoot we want the muscle flash flash to just fire off so let's just do that muscle flash to play and now let's go and set up the actual muscle flash so let's go to the pistol and under the pistol we'll make a new effect and a new particle system and let's just create this rather quickly i'll just speed the footage up right here So I've just set up a particle system here, made sure that it's not looping. And as you can see, when I press play, it'll fire off this little, little burst Oof, like that. And I think that's just fine. So what I want to do now is in the animate weapon, I want to make sure that this muzzle flash plays. Now, this is going to run purely local, but let's just try and play the game locally just to see how this works. So as you can see, poof, and now it, it throws out those little particle effects, which will then just immediately disappear. So I think that looks quite good. I also noticed that it played immediately, which I don't want. So playing awake, it's going to be off as well. And that should work just fine. Now we need to make sure that this animate weapon call actually networks, which should just happen like a server RPC, like so. And the more I think about it, I'm actually uncertain if we can call a server RPC as a virtual void, but I guess we'll, this is a learning experience for all of us. And what we want now is an observer's RPC to actually play the muscle flash. So private void play muscle flash, like so. And I'll just throw this in here and this up here. And hopefully that should now network it. So also one thing I, didn't show that I did was I just drag and dropped it in here um, and I'm actually going to copy it to the rest of the weapons too. So I'm going to copy the particle system, throw it on the rifle, copy the particle system, throw it on the shotgun as well. So let's just make sure that those line up. That should be just fine. And the particle system on the shotgun lastly, and that should be just fine. 
Okay, now let me just enable these again and make sure that they are dragged into the right position, like so. There we go. And let's try and play multiplayer. So let's also just make sure that it works on the other weapons. As you can see it looks like it does. And running it on my other screen so that we can look over here. And as you can see, the muzzle flash now fires off when I shoot. And so when I go and shoot the other player, you can see that I'm actually shooting at it. There we go. Now we network this. You can also grab the shotgun. That should work just fine as well. As you can see, the muzzle flash comes out in the right position with one second in between. And yeah, so now we've got networks and particle effects and i don't know if we should do a little weapon animation or if we should just have the player's aim physically go up i guess we can do whatever we'd like but for now i think this is okay with just the muzzle flash maybe we can add some screen check at some point and yeah i think this looks quite quite good okay right i've decided let's try and make a little animation on the weapons themselves that'll just have them sort of recoil a little bit just so there's some a bit more of a physical element to it so let me just try and put on an animator oh and let's go make some new animations i'm just gonna make a new folder call it animation and in here i'm gonna make an animation controller which i will just be called weapon and let's open that up and let's throw that on the pistol and now let's make a new animation so let's open the animation window and i'll just plop that down here and i'll create a new animation clip which hopefully can just be generic i'm not good with animations at all i know basically nothing but let's try so let me just make a new animation clip i'm gonna call this one weapon recoil and so let's just record and let's start by adding the current position and rotation and if we go a little bit forward let's try and add it so that it rotates back and moves up a little bit like that and then it should end up back to where it was and let's just try and do this i just want to see how this looks now if we just try this go into the animator we have the weapon recoil which we need to just create an idle state so this is just going to idle it's going to be empty and that's going to be the default state and we're going to make a transition down here which is going to be called by a trigger so let's go make a new parameter new trigger let's just call it fire this will be sent off with fire it'll just go back after it's done playing which means the exit time will be will be at let's say 74 yeah that should be good but 75 the transition duration is 0.25% that should hopefully be good and this is triggered with fire this should have no exit time because it's triggered and yeah on the pistol now we have the animator which i'm not sure why that's blue to be honest again i don't know much about animations we're gonna add the network animator component to it which you can see it's now synchronizing fire this now means that in the a player weapon we also want a private reference to the network animator which i'm just gonna call net anim network animator with an underscore like so and whenever that the let's just call this one play animation observer for that sake that's better because we want to also trigger the set the trigger of the fire command and just play that in here so this this method is just going to run all the animation stuff that we have for now and let's just go set that up on the two other weapons as well so let me copy the animator component here and just throw that in here this component is new and same goes with the shotgun this component is new and want to add the network animator and we want to add the network animator like so and hopefully this just works let's just go test locally first the weapon is floating above me Okay, so it's not set to instance of an object. Oh, right, of course, because we don't get the network animator right now. So in awake, we just want to say if try get component out network animator. We call this one net anim and say underscore network animator equals to net anim, like so. And let's try and do this now. So I click play. Right, there's obviously something wrong with my animation here in terms of positioning. It looks like it did work at firing it off, but obviously the animation was a little funky, just slightly. <laughs> is there a local position hmm yeah again i can't stress it enough i'm not an animation guy i guess we could technically just disable this just keep it simple you can make your own animation this will just rotate it i mean this is i went really cheap on that okay so it fires twice that's because on the animator here we actually see that it is here twice which means it shouldn't which what if i set this to 74 i think that should just fix the problem just make sure that it doesn't reach 100 it still loops hmm animation weapon recoil what if i just make it not capable of looping that looks like it works except this weapon seems to be firing too quickly interesting i mean you can play around with this yourself i'm really not into animations i'm not a polish guy okay we all know this by now i can make things work i don't make things pretty which is a little bit sad because making things pretty is cool it's interesting it's acting like this though but uh i think i'm just gonna keep it like this i think it's beautiful and also this video has run a bit over time so i hope 
this was still a learning experience for you, even though, you know, I'm not an animation guy. Functionality wise, it does work. So let's just stick to that, shall we? And in the next video, I guess I'm going to set up some UI so you can also see the health that you have. And we can perhaps look into the actual dying or disabling and respawning of the player and figuring out how that part of the gameplay loop is going to work. So yeah, hopefully you learned something and I just hope that you have a wonderful day.